What's up everyone, this video is going to be on Prodigy and how he ended up having the highest sack rate out of the entire field at the Madden Challenge Tournament while also being one of the least heavy blitzers out of everybody. Now, Prodigy, I've been wanting to make a video on him because he really did have a good run, went 3-0 undefeated in the group stages, got an automatic bid to the semi-final and just happened to run into a competitor who was hitting his stride and Drini who ended up winning the tournament. But it was still a very good showing for his first major, so I've been wanting to make a video on him. Now, this video going to go over his defense. As you can see here, 22.95% blitz rate, third fewest blitzes in the entire tournament, only above Matster, who sat in pretty much cover 6 and cover 9 the entire time, along with Spoto, who called a ton of cover 2 drop. But the highest sack rate, 22.33% sack rate. So as you can see, blitzing doesn't always correlate with sacks. So I just wanted to give you guys a few examples of that throughout this video. Now this first example is going to come from his game against Matster. And this is just going to be an example of Prodigy adjusting and knowing where he needs to be on the field for his given defense. Now Matt was running obviously a ton of single back tight slots. His main passing play out of this formation was the HB wheel and with either underneath crossing routes or underneath hitch routes. So what you're going to see here, Prodigy just knows where he needs to be. Got the underneath crossing routes. He knows he needs to stay on this Y receiver because he knows he has help with this A receiver crossing right into this zone. He knows he doesn't need to carry that. Don't get overzealous and try and jump anything. Just stay disciplined. Stay in your zone. The inside post route is going to be taken away because of the fact that it's a cover 3 shell. And you're going to see Prodigy does a great job of sifting through Staying on the drag, staying on the drag, and then peeling off, going to the in route. Matster literally didn't have a read on that play, and he ends up getting a four-man rush coverage sack. Now, later on in that game, you're going to see a similar look pre-snap from Prodigy. Matster's still in that single back tight slots, and you're going to see him run HB wheel once again. And this time, Prodigy post-snap actually going to fall into a Tampa 2 style six-man blitz. So you see the Tampa 2, you see the cloud flats on the outside, the two deep safeties. Prodigy has the entire middle of the field to himself. And you see he understands this time he needs to play very, very aggressively over the middle of the field. Look how much further up he is this play compared to the last example. He knows he needs to get underneath those crossing routes and dissuade Master from throwing them so that Master has to wait for one of his longer developing routes to break and get open. But that's just not going to happen right there. He chips the Y receiver, pulls back on the A receiver. Matt's only reads right now his X post is just starting to break along with the in route by the B receiver. But in this case, it's already too late. His defensive end already got around his left tackle, and he's going to end up getting a sack. So that's just an example of mixing up your plays, mixing up your blitzes, send four, send six, know your assignment. I think that's the biggest thing, Prodigy, watching his game film. He knew where he needed to be defensively based off of his pass rush along with his backside coverage shells. Now this final example is going to come from a semi-final matchup against Drini, and I think it's another good example of Prodigy's play calling based on down and distance and opponent tendency. So up to this point, Drini had four third downs in which he came out and gun bunch. Two of them he ran HB base and two of them he ran bunch trail. So a run play and then a max protect, seven man protection, three man route play that really you don't want to get flushed out the pocket in bunch trail, especially not away from the bunch side because it messes up your playmaker hitch. When you're on the run, it gets harder to kind of direct that traffic, and you obviously don't want to get flushed away from the bunch because you want to be able to roll out to try and hit that corner route everybody loves. So in this case, third and four, Prodigy fighting for his life as you see late in the fourth quarter. He's going to dial up a DB fire two press blitz right here, and it's going to work like a charm. Drini's actually going to go with the PA post play, which is a mix up on what he was doing beforehand, but in this case, Prodigy sends six. And as you see right here, Prodigy once again knows where he needs to be. The entire middle of the field is his, but he, recogni he recognizes the play, obviously PA post based off the play fake, and he knows, I don't need to worry about that deep post route. I blitz six, I have the Tampa two, and the other thing, look how aggressively Prodigy pulls up these safeties. So based on the fact that Prodigy pulled this safety all the way into the box, he's now in a much better position to make a play on either Cooper or number 13 right there running the streak. So neither of those routes are really tempting for Drini to throw. Prodigy knows where he needs to be underneath playing very aggressively once again as you see he did in the last example when he sent a six man blitz. He knows he needs to be on that underneath B route crossing over the middle of the field. Drini has nowhere to go with the ball, ends up getting sacked and it does give Prodigy a chance to come back in this game. Ultimately he did not but once again like I said at the beginning of the video very good showing from Prodigy at this tournament in my opinion. 
So that's going to be it for this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. As always, leave a comment. Let me know if there's anything specific you'd like to see me break down from these tournaments. As always, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, guys, take it easy.